Hey everybody and welcome to This Week in Horror, a weekly horror news segment on Morbidly Beautiful's YouTube channel. My name is Nightmare Maven and let's jump right into it. As we start off every segment, let's begin with the birthdays and death days we'll be celebrating this week. So today, April 2nd, you can say happy birthday to Michael Fassbender uh, who plays David in Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Also say happy birthday to Danish writer Hans Christian Andersen who is responsible for like all of the classic Disney movies that we know and love pretty much. And I included him in here because his original fairy tales were actually quite dark. Finally today you can say happy birthday to Lindy Booth who is a 90s and early 2000s horror story. Star, uh, starring in the remake of Dawn of the Dead, Cry Wolf, and Wrong Turn, among others. Tomorrow on April 3rd, you can say happy birthday to Alec Baldwin, star of Beetlejuice, which recently celebrated its 30th anniversary. And say happy birthday to Adam Scott, star of Little Evil. Then on the 4th, you can say happy birthday to Jennifer Lynch, who is the daughter of iconic director David Lynch. She has directed episodes on many, many popular shows, including genre shows, American Horror Story, The Strain, Salem, Wayward Pines, The Walking Dead, and so much more. On this day, you can also say happy birthday to Michael Parks, who is a genre icon. Uh, he starred in such films as From Dusk Till Dawn, Death Proof, Planet Terror, Tusk, and once again, so many others. Then you can say happy birthday to Anthony Perkins, who famously starred as Norman Bates in Alfred Hitchcock's 1960 film, Psycho. Then on April 5th, you can say happy birthday to Zach Bagans, who recently released his documentary, Demon House. And he's also one of the stars of the show, Ghost Adventures. Also on this day, it is Roger Corman's birthday, who is a prolific horror director and producer and even has dabbled in acting. Um, he has too many, too many productions to list. Um, some of his most popular were his Mask of the Red Death, Tales of Terror, and The Raven. And then on April 8th, you can say happy birthday to Patricia Arquette, who isn't necessarily a genre star, but her first feature film debut was iconically in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. And then our last birthday for this week is the absolutely iconic and menacing Kane Hodder, who, like so many others on this list, has way too many production credits, <laughs> acting credits, whatever credits, um, to his name for me to list. But you would definitely recognize him as slasher icons Jason Voorhees and Victor Crowley. Lucky for us this week, we only have two deaths to acknowledge in the horror sphere. Um, I'm just gonna put a little disclaimer here that there are actually quite a lot of, I guess you could say famous deaths. <laughs> that sounds weird to say because it's somebody's death. So it's famous people that have died. That's what I'm trying to say. There's actually quite a lot that happened this week, but only two of people in like, the horror genre, kind of. Um, so I, I don't wanna list every single death that's happened this week. I'm sure you know some of the ones that I am referring to because then every week then I'm gonna have to, do you know what I mean? You know what I mean. Um, <laughs> so the two horror deaths that occurred this week in history um, are on April 3rd, uh, we lost Conrad Veidt who famously played Cesar the Somnambulist in The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Then on April 4th, we lost Roger Ebert, who I know is not a horror person, but I thought I would include him because one, he is a famous movie critic, and two, he famously <laughs> hated most horror movies. Now onto the five headlines for the week. All right, uh, first things up is some more Beetlejuice news. I know we were just talking about it last week. The news is floating around that Beetlejuice is taking Broadway next Halloween. While production or casting has not started on the project yet, pretty much the whole crew has been <laughs> uh, decided and, you know, uh, released. I'm not gonna list all of the names here, but uh, like costumes, music, 
direction, all of that has been decided. I think it's safe to say that they're gonna go ahead and move forward with this project. Um, there's no telling what the story is gonna be yet. There are little blurbs here and there floating around on the internet that it's going to explore Lydia's story a bit more. Um, the creators of the musical were interested in her her character and the story of her character, you know, because she's so, you know, obsessed with death and things like that and um, contrasted with Beetlejuice who is obsessed with the living. So be interesting to see what story they decide upon for the musical. Well, second piece of news, Zach Bagans, who I just talked about in the birthday section, um, star of Ghost Adventures, uh, recently released his documentary Demon House about a famous house in Gary, Indiana that is haunted by demonic forces in a very powerful way. Fresh off of the release of Demon House, this was just released maybe two weeks ago, I feel like. Uh, two or three weeks ago, has now announced a new documentary project that he's kind of taking on now about Charles Manson. Um, the documentary is gonna be titled Manson's Bloodline um, and is gonna have a lot to do with Charles Manson's grandson. Third piece of news is Fox's New Mutants is almost completely being reshot because of the trailer that was released for the movie. I read a couple <laughs> of articles about this and it's a lot of information, so I'm gonna try and say it as best I can and as clearly as I can. Um, I will link to an article in the description box that will probably explain it in more detail and better than I am about to, so. So if you're interested in New Mutants, you can read that down there. Basically, from what I understand, New Mutants was supposed to have a breakfast club kind of feel, but set in the world of Stephen King. That's the feel that the, the film is supposed to have. So they cut together a trailer, which if you've seen that trailer, which I will also link <laughs> in the description box, it looks like a straight up horror movie. Response to the trailer um, in some of the articles I read, they equated it to the same response that the Deadpool trailer got. Um, and obviously the studio was super excited about that because Deadpool did awesome when it was released. They then decided that they wanted the rest of the movie to match the feeling of the trailer. So that is causing um, a new character to possibly be added and the whole thing, almost not the whole thing, but <laughs> more than half of it to be reshot. A possible companion movie to Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon could be in the works, the early works, but still the works. There's no telling if it's gonna be a sequel or a prequel. Um, on the Facebook page, Before the Mask, The Return of Leslie Vernon, a photo was posted um, which included the original film's director, Scott Glosserman, and stars Angela Gothels and Nathan Basil. Hopefully I said those right. Um, I'm pretty sure I butchered like every single one of those names. They were in the background of the photo and in the foreground um, is what appears to be a script, which is kind of out of focus. The picture's kind of alluding to a possible sequel, prequel, whatever cool in the works. Finally, fifth piece of news, another photo has surfaced on social media getting people excited about another awesome franchise, which is the Predator franchise. Um, Shane Black recently tweeted a set photo teasing his upcoming film, The Predator. The photo just shows a piece of the set with some really nice lighting. Um, you can tell it's like a jungle setting um, and the caption read, shh, he's coming. Uh, the Predator is set to release on September 14th and reshoots are currently happening right now. Um, but Shane Black also has teased um, that a teaser trailer will be coming very soon. So that's all of the headlines I have for you guys today. Um, as always, if you need more horror news, you can find that on morbidlybeautiful.com. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about the headlines this week. Are you excited about the new Beetlejuice musical? How do you feel about a Charles Manson documentary directed by Zach Bagans? And are you excited for The Predator? But that's all for me. So until next time, stay strange. Bye.